Hello students, welcome to IES Icons by An Academy. This is Shubham Sarthadiya. Continuing with our discussion for NCERT, today we will be discussing the last chapter for class 6th NCERT for the subject geography. So, all those who have joined us for the first time or watching me for the first time, I would like to tell you that we have started this special series where we are covering NCERT subject wise, chapter wise for each and every subject that is important for UPSC examination. So, I request you, if you haven't watched those NCERTs, uh, please uh, go back to the channel, you will find the video playlist where you can watch each and every chapter. Proceeding with our discussion, if you are preparing for UPSC, you need to start your preparation with India's largest learning platform that is An Academy. Sir, we at An Academy offer you widest choice of educators, you get flexibility to change your course, you can watch the lectures unlimited times, you get dedicated doubt solving session, printed comprehensive notes, live mentorship, daily answer writing practice. So all these things together result into your selection in this examination. Aspirants like you with the help of the top educators of the country that you see on your screen were able to qualify this examination with a decent rank securing a single digit rank in this examination my name is shubham sardhali i am your educator and mentor for upsc csc preparation you can opt with us for our plus and iconic subscriptions using this code ias icon so you this code will help you fetch maximum discounts on all our courses we are giving you a special nine months prelims course for the upcoming prelims of the year 2023 Approximately 9 months are left for this upcoming prelims and in these 9 months with the top faculty in the most comprehensive manner you will be able to cover this entire UPSC syllabus. So if you are among those who are aiming for this 2023 exam this course is definitely for you. You can enroll with us in this course before 24th October using this code IES icons and you will get a big discount on our course. Simultaneously, apart from GS, CSET becomes really important. So, for a limited period offer, we are giving you the CSET course for Rs. 8,999 with the help of this code IES icons. Our batches are starting very soon from 20th of October and fresh batches are starting for UPSC. Sir, we have been discussing NCERTs for class 6, the class 6 NCERT textbook, The Earth, Our Habitat. Today's discussion is about the last chapter of 6th class NCERT geography that is India climate vegetation and wildlife so we'll be discussing it i have been following a way that i give you summarized notes but i received certain requests through various social media handles from the students where they wanted me to discuss the things with the help of a textbook so what we'll do is we'll just go through the textbook first and then we'll come back here with our <coughs> notes thing so what will be what we will be doing here is first of all i'll be taking you all to the ncert textbook so we'll read that textbook, we'll try to understand the things written over there and then we'll come back here and we will understand the things uh, in the form of short notes which you need to remember, which you need to revise on daily basis before you go and write your final examination. So, sir, there is something known as weather. Every day we see weather report either on the mobile or either on the news on televisions. So there are two terms, one is weather and other is climate. We often get confused between these two terms, one is weather, other is climate, but there is a big difference. There is a saying that climate is what we expect and weather is what we get. If I ask you what is the climate of India, so climate is something, the temperatures, the rainfall patterns that India has been witnessing from last 50, 60, 100 years. So we know that in from uh, if we talk about northern part of India from the month of uh, January to June, we uh, or uh, we witness different types of climates. For example, from January up till February, we see winters. Then from February onwards, uh, or from the month of March and April, we see spring season coming. April, May onwards, up till June, we have summers. And from July up till September ending, we have monsoon season. After that, we see the arrival of autumn followed by winters. And this cycle continues. So what is this? This is the exact climate of India which we have been witnessing over the years but when it comes to weather sir weather will change every day when you open up your phone in the morning to see how will be the weather remember you go and search for the weather you are not searching for the climate because climate is something which you have been seeing from since the since your day of birth so climate has been there since Number of years, weather is something that is subset of that climate that keeps on changing daily. So some someday you may have a cool weather, you someday it's a rainy weather. So weather changes from day to day basis. So sometimes you may see weather is sunny, you may find weather is windy. 
एट टाइम्स यू नीड वॉर्म क्लोदिंग एट टाइम्स यू नीड वुलन क्लोदिंग ऑल दीज थिंग्स दे आर हैपनिंग बिकॉज देर इज एन ओवरऑल टेम्परेचर दैट प्रोसेस ड्यूरिंग डिफरेंट पीरियड्स एंड ऑन डे टू डे बेसिस वेदर इज चेंजिंग आर कंट्री इंडिया इज ब्रॉडली डिवाइडेड इन टू मेजर सीजन विच इंक्लूड कोल्ड वेदर सीजन दिसंबर टू फेबर एज आई टोल्ड यू देन वी हैव हॉट वेदर सीजन फ्रॉम मार्च टू मे एंड जून देन वी हैव साउथ वेस्ट मानसून दैट इज जून टू सेप्टेम्बर एंड वी हैव रिट्रीटिंग मानसून और वी कॉल इट एज ऑटम फ्रॉम अक्टूबर टू नवंबर सो एंटायर ट्वेल्व मंथ्स ऑफ द ईयर आर डिवाइडेड इन टू वेरियस सीजन वी हैव कोल्ड वेदर सीजन और विंटर वॉट हैपन्स वेन इट इज कोल्ड वेदर सीजन सर ड्यूरिंग द कोल्ड वेदर सीजन सन रेज डायरेक्टली डू नॉट फॉल on to the particular place if you remember the topic the lecture of latitudes and longitudes what i told you when it is winter season in northern hemisphere what is actually happening the sun has shifted towards the southern hemisphere the maximum extent to which sun has reached during the winter season in north india is tropic of capricorn so sun is directly overhead the tropic of capricorn and on the other side of equator that is the northern hemisphere since we are not able to get direct sun rays so we experience a winter season so uh, the northern uh, region or the northern part of india sees very low temperatures for example places like delhi uh, chandigarh amritsar all these places see very low temperatures during this winter simultaneously there is another season when the sun is directly overhead in northern hemisphere it can reach up to tropic of cancer in that case so during that situation what will happen when sun is directly overhead we see the season known as summers temperatures are really high very hot and dry wind blows which is known as loo you must have heard in summers in the month of may and june if you want to go out somewhere your mother will tell you cover your face properly because there is loo blowing outside it is a hot and dry wind that we see in the seasons of summer then we have rainy season followed by summers as the uh, in northern india if i talk about after the uh, month of june is over in the first week of july we see the onset of monsoon so what is on monsoon monsoon is actually arrival of winds from bay of bengal and arabian sea so what happens is a uh, water laden winds from arabian sea and bay of bengal they are flowing towards the indian land mass since they are coming from the water bodies they carry moisture along with them so they are moisture carrying winds that come towards the indian subcontinent the moment these winds are obstructed by a some uh, mountainous barrier the rainfall occurs so arrival of water laden winds from arabian sea and bay of bengal is what is known as monsoon and then we have the autumn season or the retreating monsoon so the these water laden winds they enter the indian subcontinent from southern part they go up to the northern extent of india and from there they will go back to the origin so that that is the time when these moisture laden winds are going back we call it as season of retreating monsoon or autumn monsoon term comes from arabic word mausim which means seasons so india's uh, location is such uh, uh, in region we india lies in tropical region it it lies between equator and tropic of cancer so here we get the rain that we get is because of monsoon wind so the majority of rainfall that we see in india is during the month of monsoon agriculture in india is deeply dependent on the monsoon good monsoon means adequate uh, crops and if there is less monsoon the crops will be uh, impacted climate of a place is affected by its latitude distance from the sea undoubtedly if you go to the coastal areas you go to places like a uh, southern part of india you go to goa mumbai you will find more or less a moderate climate why because of their excess because of their distance from the sea on the other hand if we go towards the himalayan ranges if you go towards the higher altitudes of north you will experience chilling cold example jaisalmer and bikaner they are lying in the uh, regions which have desert so we find very hot climate there whereas areas like daras and kargil in earlier which they were part of jammu and kashmir but now they are part of ladakh ut so you will find really cold climates and then cities like mumbai kolkata they experience moderate climate because of their proximity to sea so these are the things which are happening because of the geographical locations for example mausin ram in meghalaya is a place that receives highest rainfall whereas we may witness not even a single instance of rain in places like jaisalmer in rajasthan so because of these climatic conditions somewhere we have a lot of rain somewhere we do not have rain at all somewhere we have very 
high temperature somewhere we have very low temperatures depending on these situations what we find here is depending on these situations we find different types of vegetations so different climates give rise to different vegetations and there are variety of vegetations that are found in india we see variety of plants in our surroundings uh, somewhere we find green grass green grass somewhere we find long trees we find bushes we find thorny shrubs so all these when in a small piece of land there is lot of green cover the trees are located in a very close proximity they form a situation known as forest so what is a forest you plant two to three trees around you that will be a simple vegetation but in a same piece of land if there are 2000 trees it will take a form of forest as you can see in this image so what is happening here is too many trees when planted together give rise to forest there are various types of forest and forest perform various functions for example they release oxygen and absorb carbon dioxide they bind the soil and prevent soil erosion they give us variety of features like they provide wood for furniture they give us fuel wood they give us fodder we get medicinal plants herbs honey gum etc all these things are obtained from forest they are the natural habitat of wildlife forest is the place where wildlife is staying we never go and make the uh, habitats or we never go and make the houses for uh, tigers or lions for any other wild animal they find their own habitat staying in the forest so forest give us n number of benefits but over the periods we have seen that natural vegetation is being destroyed because of the reckless cutting of trees which is really a, a alarming situation if we keep on cutting the trees like that we may fail to get the benefits that we are uh, ripening currently from the trees so in order to make people aware about the importance of these trees and forests one mahotsav is celebrated by the people so in this image you can see n number of benefits that forest and trees offer us they give us oxygen they give us produce like fruits gum honey natural habitat for wildlife they are providing us timber we get rubber from trees we get furniture we get furniture made from the tree wood we get sports goods made from it fuel wood is obtained we get fodder for our cattle we get shelter even if you go to the uh, rural areas you still find the kacha houses with thatched roofs they are made up of uh, wood and other things obtained from trees you get medicinal properties in certain trees which are used to make medicines and above all we get oxygen so these are the benefits we get from them forests provide a habitat a place where wild animals can live we find amphibians mammals birds reptiles each and everything they dwell in forest and they help us in various ways if we talk about uh, animals we all are aware that tiger is our national animal then we have gir forest in gujarat which is house to asiatic lions elephants and one horned rhinoceros are found in assam elephants are found in karnataka and kerala camels and wild asses are found in great indian de desert and run of kutch wild goats snow leopard etc are found in himalayan reaches we find various other animals like monkey wolf jackal nil gai cheetah etc India is equally rich in birds bird life also peacock is our national bird we see common birds like parrots pigeons geese bulbul ducks etc so these are the things we also find various species there are hundreds of species of snakes in india cobra etc but all these species be it be insects be it animals be it birds be it reptiles they all are dependent upon the forest for their habitat and their livelihood uh, sorry for their life but if we go on destroying this forest these animals and birds will lose their habitat and ultimately they will become extinct and we have been seeing this certain species are endangered they are on the verge of extinction in order to protect them then government takes up various steps government set up national parks wildlife sanctuaries etc for example project tiger project Ele elephant they were started so that such animals can be protect protected from extinction so that is the overall discussion about this ncert for class 8th i have uh use i made the use of this ncert pdf because i received this request that sir please please through the book now the very similar things we will uh, understand in the form of notes so you need not to remember the things from book as it is because book will contain n number of other things what we need to do here is we need to remember the notes that i provide you so what all we discussed in the ncert textbook we'll just summarize it in the form of notes so what is weather weather is the day to day change in the atmosphere i told you there is climate and there is weather so climate is something that has been persisting over an area for number of years so even though if somebody is staying in some other country but belong to india he will have the idea that if it is month of june or may in delhi it would be really hot 
even though he is not staying here, even though he is not feeling that thing, but still he knows why, because he knows that climate of Delhi is like, like that. So, what is climate? Climate is something that persists over a longer period of time and there are certain changes on everyday basis which is known as weather. Some day it's too much hot, some day it is lesser hot, some day we may see rain, some day we, say we may see wind. So all these things they form the weather of a particular place. There are major season in India that is cold weather season we call it winters, then hot weather season we call it summer, then southwest monsoon season which we call as monsoon and season of retreating monsoon that we call as autumn. Then we have cold weather season or winter. What is this cold weather season or winter? So cold weather season is when, as I told you that if we go by the geographical thing, sun, winter season in northern hemisphere means that sun is somewhere overhead the tropic of Capricorn. So the sun rays falling on the northern hem hemisphere are actually slanting. So we are not able to receive that quantum of heat from the sun which makes the temperature low here and especially in northern part of India, cool dry winds blow. During the winter season, sun rays will not fall on the region and it's the other way around also. When it is summer season in northern hemisphere, simultaneously the southern hemisphere will witness winters and because of the same reason, because sun rays will not be falling directly. Then when sun rays come towards the uh, northern hemisphere, we uh, witness summer season here. Sun rays are falling directly now. Hot winds blow which are called as loo. Then we have southwest monsoon. Once the summer season is there, followed by that is a monsoon season. When moisture laden winds from bay of bengal and arabian sea they enter indian subcontinent i'll just show you with the help of a map how this things goes eventually we'll understand the concept of high pressure and low pressure and i'll explain you the phenomena for monsoon but at this point we need to understand that here we have the something known as arabian sea here we have something known as bay of bengal so what happens is winds are blowing from Arabian Sea towards the Indian subcontinent. Winds are blowing from Bay of Bengal towards Indian subcontinent. Why winds are blowing I will discuss in later classes because of the low pressure area created over this landmass because of hot winds. What is the concept of low pressure area? How hot winds and low temperature give rise to uh, low pressure? This we will understand but there is a low pressure area created on Indian subcontinent because of which Winds from Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal, they rush towards that low pressure area and since they are coming from above the water bodies, they will carry a lot of moisture in them and this moisture when brought in the at the Indian subcontinent, the moment these winds are obstructed by some mountain or other, other obstacle, the water they are carrying falls on the region as monsoon. So we see rainfall during this season. Simultaneously what happens is after travelling up till here, when intercepted by the great Himalayas, these winds tend to go back. So this is known as retreating monsoon. So what happens in the summer season in, from July, to June to October, September onwards we see monsoon or rainy winds coming from water bodies and September to November what we witness is these winds are going back. So during those times, for example in present times we are in the month of October. So we are witnessing rainfall in certain parts. So this is because of the retreating monsoon. These moisture laden winds are now going back. So this gives rise to uh, monsoon season and retreating monsoon and followed by the retreating monsoon we witness something known as what? We witness something known as winter. So retreating monsoon winds move back from mainland to Bay of Bengal. So in this way the moisture laden winds they will go back and fall into Bay of Bengal. Monsoon rain and then retreating monsoon. I told you that climate of a place is affected by its location. The areas that are located nearby to the sea will have moderate climate. The areas at high altitude will have very low temperatures. The areas at uh, close to deserts will have high temperatures. For example, Mausin Ram in Meghalaya, it receives world's highest rainfall. Whereas simultaneously, there is a place called Jaisalmer, which receives almost nil rainfall throughout the year. Because of these features like some place receiving more rainfall, some place receiving lesser rainfall, we find difference in vegetation. So because of this, there are various different types of natural vegetation. In India, we see grasses, we see shrubs, trees. They grow automatically without any human interference. You never go and grow the grass somewhere around you. You never went to grow a forest. These things, they grew on their own without the human intervention and that's why it is known as natural vegetation. In India, the natural vegetation is of various types. We have tropical evergreen forest, we have tropical deciduous forest, we have thorny bushes, we have mountain vegetation and we have mangrove forests. 
we'll discuss about them one by one what is tropical rainforest these are found in the areas which receive heavy rainfall what is tropic let's understand this is equator here we have tropic of cancer and here we have tropic of capricorn the regions between this tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn it is known as tropics are we following it so tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn this area is known as tropical region so the forests here which are fed on rain are known as tropical rainforest they are found in the area which receive heavy rainfall eventually when we proceed i'll explain you why this region receives maximum rainfall many species of trees that are found in this forest they shed their leaves at different times so there are various species some species is shedding its leaf in one month other species is shedding its leaf in another month so in that way at one particular time many plants are shedding their leaves but simultaneously there are various other plants which will retain its green leaves so that's why they are known as evergreen forests you go and visit these forests any time in the year you may find certain dried up trees but more or less majority of the trees will be green so this brings it a name evergreen forest important trees of these evergreen forest are mahogany ebony rosewood we need to remember these mahogany ebony rosewood are the examples of evergreen trees then we have tropical deciduous forest these are also known as monsoon forest what happens here is they trees in these forests are more or less of similar species and what they do they shed their leaves together so when they are shedding their leaves entire forest would go dry so in a particular season for example in autumn season if you go and visit these forests you will find that almost all trees will have dried up leaves they have already shed their leaves example of these trees are sal teak peepal neem shisham etc then we have thorny bushes what are these thorny bushes they are found in the dry areas particular in the desert areas so either plants have leaves or either plants have thorns so the areas where there is scarcity of water for example deserts you will find plants which are having thorns why because if they had leaves it would attract more surface area and hence will receive more heat from the sun and more water will evaporate lesser is the surface area lesser evaporation of water will take place so in order to avoid the water losses in those areas which are already feeling scarcity of water these plants grow thorns they their leaves are in the form of spines and reduce the loss of water important trees are cactus kenner babool kikar etc then we have thorny bushes after that we have mountain vegetation mountain vegetation as the name suggests they are found in high altitude somewhere between 1500 to 2500 meters above the uh, sea level we find these trees these trees are in conical shape you might have visited certain hill stations so when you go to any of the hill station you find trees like this trees in this shape so these trees are in a cone shape of a cone so mountain vegetation is uh, of this shape they are known as coniferous because of their cone like shape they get this name coniferous trees example of these trees are cheed pine deodar these types of mountain uh, trees you are found you will find in mountain regions only then we have mangrove forests mangrove forests are seen in coastal areas they survive in saline water so they will you will find them around the seas because they you will get saline water over there sundari is one of the example of mangrove forest what are mangrove trees mangrove trees are the ones whose roots are above the surface of the earth normally what happens is tree grows like this and you have roots below but these mangrove trees are such that their roots are grown above the surface of the uh, soil and they are found particularly in coastal areas so sundari is the example of such mangrove forest i hope we are clear with the basic discussion of weather and climate we are clear with the reasons of different vegetation and what are these types of different vegetations we'll discuss them in detail but since this is the only thing which is being mentioned in class 6th ncert with this chapter our ncert for class 6th is over i guess we are pretty much clear with things that we understood if you have any doubt you can drop your comments in the comment section you can reach out to us through this telegram channel on telegram channel you need to find this is icons and you can ask your doubts there for ending the discussion if you are aiming to qualify this upsc examination you need to rigorously practice the art of answer writing you can master the art of answer writing for gs also for optionals also with the help of an academy test series you have to enroll with us in our test series using this code ias icons thank you very much please like the video please subscribe to the channel please drop your valuable comments and you can get the pdfs on our telegram channel that is ias icons thank you very much all the best keep working hard bye bye take care
जय हिंद